I'm a designer's. Uh, well, I don't know if you're watching this in the morning, probably not. Um, but I'm recording it in the morning, and it's a beautiful morning. It's going to be crazy hot today. And I'm uh, trying to get everything done so I can maybe spend some time outside this afternoon. Um, yeah, so we're going to investigate gears in much more detail later this term, um, but we need to introduce some of the basic geometry and terminology uh, right now so you can get a start on your design project. Um, when most of you think of a gear, uh, you probably think of a spur gear, right, where there's some teeth like that and then some teeth like that, and then as this turns this way, it, these teeth, these teeth here push on these teeth. Um, and then at the, the, if this is the driving, and this is the driven, um, so they, they, they mesh like that, and that's how we transmit power. Um, so these are most basic All right, uh, we can improve on that a little bit with the helical gears here, um, where we can see that the, the teeth are at angles like this, and then these are at meshing angles like that. Um, these are a little quieter, a little smoother. Um, they don't, when, when the gears contact each other, um, it, it's a more gradual uh, pressure application. Uh, bevel gears, um, so this is for changing angles, or for, changing, we can call it the direction of torque vector. Right, uh, for instance, um, so drive shaft and axles. Right, or the lower unit of a boat engine. something like that. Um, so that's kind of tricky. Uh, and then finally we have worm gears for um, very large uh, gear ratios. All right, what is a gear ratio? Um, so this could turn 100 times where this turns uh, maybe one time. Right, so we've got very, very high gear ratios um, with these gears. All right, some actual pictures of them. Um, this is the spur gear, uh, and this is what we will study these. Uh, in the red box there. Um, now, in reality, they're, they're used probably the least um, for the advantages. Um, but they're the, the simplest, right? So we just want to get the basic concepts down of um, bending stresses and contact stresses and fatigue life and whatnot. Um, the same basic principles apply uh, to the, the bevel gear and the spur gear and the, and the worm gear, um, but, uh, but it's much more simple, uh, simplest to apply them to these. Okay, so that's why we're going to do those. Uh, all right, so some basic uh, terminology here. Um, when we when we look back at this, and we can say, all right, well, um, the gear ratio. So let, let's call it um, let's call this the pin. So if this is the driving, we also call this the pinion, and we call this the gear. So in general, um, pinion is driving. And then gear is driven. Now that's not always true, okay? So I'm going to kind of put a dotted box around that. Um, sometimes uh, people say they refer to the smaller one. Um, and, we, and we, we just don't always, <clears throat> the, the, the terminology, unfortunately, is a little vague, right? So you really need to think and listen. And if someone is describing something to you and they're referencing opinion and gear, you ask. So is the opinion the smaller one or is the opinion the driving one? Sometimes it's both, right? Ask. Okay. 
Um, so anyway, uh, the circular pitch, what was I talking about? Um, is, or what is this here? The, the, the pitch is the arc length between teeth on the pitch circle. Okay. So the, the pitch circle is, um, so this is the, the, this is the pitch circle here. And that's where they're, you know, the, the imagine, well, we'll talk about this more in a sec, but this imaginary point of tangency, um, is called the pitch point. And, uh, that's on the pitch circle. It's the, basically the effective diameter of the, uh, of the gear. Um, all right. So, um, the circular pitch is the arc length between teeth on the pitch circle. Uh, we'll show you a picture of that next. Um, so the dime, well, actually we might have a picture of it. No, we'll do that in a little bit. Um, the diametral pitch, right? So this is lowercase p here, um, uppercase p here, um, is the number of teeth per inch of diameter, right? Number of teeth per inch of diameter. So the units on this are um, teeth per inch. Right, um, and the circular pitch. This could either be uh, millimeters or inches. Um, now the module, right, and this is for uh, let's let's highlight this here. This is in English units. We use that, and then for SI units, we use that. It's just kind of a weird historical thing. Um, this is millimeters per tooth. All right, so we take the, the, the pitch diameter, right? And divide that by the number of teeth, right? It's kind of a funny unit, but it gives you a sense of the size of the teeth. Um, geometry, of course, requires that uh, the ratio of these is pi, right? Um, because it's the, um, the circumference, right? The number of teeth is related to the circumference. Uh, and then the diameter, of course, is the diameter. So um, the ratio then is, of course, pi, right? The best thing to do is just to sort through this in your own head. Um, and it's really confusing, and it's going to take you a while to learn this terminology. Um, but it's important to understand it because we're going to talk about these, and I'm going to expect you to know them. So none of this is hard. It's really just circles uh, and units, um, but you need to kind of work through it. All right, so um, Juvenile has this awesome picture. Uh, I mean, you know, surely, you know, you got some rocks here, um, right? And there's probably a caveman back here somewhere. All right, there's a caveman back there, and they're, they're doing something. All right, and this is a great picture of gears, right? Um, right angle gearing, uh, and then we have some parallel gearing on the right here. Um, and besides this being a funny picture, it, it, it points out a, a very subtle but very important, important problem, all right? And pause for a second. Seriously, pause this, and then um, see if you can figure out what the problem is, right? Why these wouldn't work really, really well. Okay, go ahead and pause. Okay, I don't know how long you paused for. Probably you didn't at all. But, um, so gears work by, you know... Um, want a driving tooth pushes on the driven tooth. Right? Okay. Um, and so the question is, how fast? Right? Well, I know that velocity equals our omega, right? And, um, the problem is R is constantly changing. Right? Because when it first engages on the tip, so the tip engages first. Right? And then slowly it works its way down, you know, to the base of the, uh, of the tooth. And then it goes back to the tip, which means the velocity constantly changing. Um, constantly, <laughs> sorry about that. Um, 
So the velocity is constantly changing. So even though maybe the driving one here, right, is at a constant velocity, it's going to be pushing this one at a not constant velocity. Right, so it's going to be going fast, slow, fast, slow, fast, slow, fast, slow, fast, slow. And if there's two teeth trying to engage at the same time, which speed does it go? Right, so that's going to cause problems. And while this would work, it would be very rough, very inefficient, and things would break. Right, the little log stick teeth here would eventually break off. <laughs> what is this here? This is a pretty cool pin here. I never really noticed that. That's pretty sweet there. So, um, Right, there's a subtle problem with this, and to get around that problem really requires some uh, amazing, um, what I would call brilliant uh, geometry, right? Uh, and that's based on the, uh, the involute curve, right? And so the way the involute curve works, if we took this, this is actually called, I, I guess I rearranged, this is called the base circle here. Um, and if I took a piece of string wrapped it around the base circle, and it's kind of marked some spots on that string. And as I unwound the string, kept track of that, um, that gives me the involute curve, right? And through the miracles of mathematics and geometry, if I make my teeth an involute curve, right, I get some very, very important properties. So the teeth always contact along this line, right? That's called the line of action. Um, and that line passes through the pitch point, which passes through pitch point. Right. And if you watch the, the, the YouTube animation that I, that I put up on the same page, um, it really spells that out pretty well. So um, the result of that is in, is in this very simplified picture in the top upper left of the spur gear. We kind of assume that the effective radius is that of the pitch circle um, and they're tangent and that's where all the power happens. It doesn't actually happen that way. But if we use involute gear teeth... Um, we will uh, we'll get an effect, the, the, the speed with which they interact will be constant, all right? Um, and it's really, really important that we use this shape, right? And then this shape also has some implications in, as to how they mesh and how we manufacture them and how they bend and how they contact and all this other stuff. But the important thing about this is that the pinion gear angular velocity ratio remains constant. Right, because if we went back to the caveman stick gears, right, a constant speed on the pinion doesn't necessarily mean there's going to be a constant speed on the gear, right? Because the ratio is constantly changing, because the radius of, you know, the the, the sticks is always changing, right? Whereas if we use these, um, it it just works out, right? And it's hard for me to explain without looking at the animation, but it is what it is. Okay, um, again, it's all about the pitch circle. Okay, so everything starts at the pitch circle. Um, and we have the line of action. We have, and this is about the pressure angle. Okay, the pressure angle is really key. So gear forces are not purely tangential. Okay, that's a big takeaway here. Uh, that we can't just say, oh, there's this nice tangential force that transmits torque or that puts it in a torque balance, right? On your homework that you're going to finish um, for this week, uh, it's a belt problem. And the reason it's a belt problem is because belts are really easy. The force is exactly tangential. But with gears, it's not. Uh, we have to consider this angle here. So um, the total force, so the tangential force winds up being what? It equals um, the total force, the force on the tooth, times the cosine of the pressure angle. All right, that's just basic geometry, basic trig. Um, but that's really, really important, right? There's a bunch of other stuff here. The angle of approach, the addendum circle, dedendum circle, pitch circle. Um, 
you just got those are less important. Um, the angle, the pressure angle is really kind of the, the most important one about this, right? Um, and their point of tangency uh, is where the two pitch circles are tangent. All right. Um, here's another picture for the of the same thing. Um, again, here's our pitch circle. That's really the most important one. That's where we assume uh, that the gears are tangent to each other. In reality, um, the, the tip of the tooth engages first, and then it goes down to the root. Um, there's the addendum right here. Uh, that's how far do the teeth go above the pitch circle. Um, the dedendum is how far do the teeth go below the pitch circle. Of course, there's a little extra here, the clearance. Um, because that's, uh, we don't want the tip of the tooth to gouge out, um, the base down there, the, the bottom land. Um, and then there's a working depth, a hole depth, a fillet radius, right? This has important stress implications. Important for stress. Um, and I think that's all the really stuff. The face width, right? Um, this makes tooth strong right the longer it is just the more force it can handle because it's a it's just more metal there yeah yeah i think that's it um there's actually one more thing uh when, when we look back at this um at this picture here we might imagine well it, there might be two sticks engaging at the same time it might not just be one tooth doing all the work there might be some sharing of the load um, and that has to do with what's called the contact ratio. How many teeth are engaging at any one time? Uh, and there's a pretty complicated formula that gives that. So that's um, contact ratio is, um, it works out to be the square root of the um, radius of the addendum circle of the pinion squared uh, minus the radius of the base circle of the pinion squared, right? Uh, and then we'll add to that the same dimensions for the gear. So the radius squared of the addendum circle of the gear and then minus the radius squared of the base circle of the gear minus um, the center to center distance Okay, um, and then uh, a sign of the pressure angle. And all that gets divided by um, the diametral pitch. Um, or the, the, yeah, the diametral pitch times the cosine of the pressure angle. All right. So, um, for instance, let me just annotate that a little bit for you. Um, that is the radius... Um, of the addendum for the pinion and this is radius of the base uh, of the pinion okay and those are all pretty standard um, ratios of you know the, the you, you can you can look that up you don't have to calculate this stuff. It, it's all, if you look into just that section 15.1 and 15.2 or whatever it is in your book, um, all this stuff is spelled out. But at least now you know a little bit more what it is. Um, and I think that's all you really need to know. Surely there will be more questions. <clears throat> um, but this will give you a good start for uh, for doing the force analysis. Really all you really need um, is the, the contact angle for your gears. Okay, that's it. We'll talk to you later. Maybe.